TV Recap here. Today, we will be talking about a TV show called Evil. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Evil is an American supernatural drama television series about a skeptical female clinical psychologist who joins an assessor and a contractor as they investigate supposed miracles, demonic possessions, and other extraordinary occurrences to see if there's a scientific explanation or if something truly supernatural is at work. Episode 1 begins in the interrogation room. Dr. Kristen Bouchard, a clinical psychologist, is interrogating Orson Leroux a man who is currently on trial for the murder of seven people. As she interviews him, Kristen receives a notification about a text on her phone. Orson asks who the person is. The psychologist turns her phone over and dismisses his question. Kristen then asks 567 true or false statements that Orson answers. Later that day, Kristen goes to court, employed by the Queen's DA's office, to testify against the defendant being psychologically sane to have committed the murders. She states to the court that they cannot trust Orson's insistence that he blacked out during the killings. After that, Orson's lawyer asks her questions in the trial. She notices a black man sitting down to watch the trial and taking notes. Then the defendant's lawyer asks Kristen if his client is possessed by a demon. The lawyer shows the judge the affidavit of his expert witness, Leland Townsend, who claims that Orson has taken on the voice and characteristics of a demonic presence named Roy. This is in order for the defendant to claim an insanity plea. On a recess, Kristen goes back to the interrogation room and finds the same black man from earlier inside the room. She goes over to the man waiting outside, Ben Shakir, and accuses the two men of coaching the defendant. The black man, David Acosta, goes out of the room and tries to offer a rosary to Kristen for her safety. Kristen, being a skeptical person, interrogates Orson and asks him about the demonic possession. The defendant tells her that he is not aware of any of this. After she finishes going through details, she recites the Lord's Prayer to Orson. The man changes expression and violently attacks Kristen as he speaks Latin. Afterwards, Kristen goes to the DA and asks for extra time so she could assess Orson further. The DA tells her that she needs to go back to the stand and claim her testimony from earlier, and if she doesn't do so, he threatens to fire her. Kristen walks up to the DA and the judge talking to each other. Kristen quits in front of them. That afternoon, Kristen goes back to her home which happens to be located just below the train tracks. She brings cake for one of her four daughters' birthday party that night. Kristen's mom babysits her granddaughters while Kristen is at work. The mom sermons Kristen about the father of the kids for being absent all the time. In the evening, she meets David Acosta who introduces himself as an assessor in a Catholic church and offers Kristen a job to work with them. David tells her that Orson won't talk to anyone but Kristen. She tells David that she's a skeptic, but David reassures her that it is what they need in their team. So, she agrees to join them in the hopes of finishing to pay her student loans. The job is to determine whether or not Orson's claims are true. The next day, David, Kristen, and Ben go over to LaRose's house to speak with his wife who claims that her husband might have been possessed. She explains to them what happened the night he came home. She let them listen to a recording of the incident, revealing whispers and the recording getting cut off. Kristen believes that the wife is determined that Orson murdered seven people because of the demonic possession. That night, she decides to Google on David Acosta and discovers personal information about him. Afterwards, she hears whooshing sounds going around the house and decides to go to bed. Moments later, she wakes up unable to move and sees a demon named George. The demon taunts her for concealing her erotic attractions towards David. Kristen continues to receive threatening visits from the demon. The next morning, she takes to her therapist Kurt and tells him everything about her night terrors and her new job. After her therapy session, she and her partner partners visit Orson's wife to debunk the wife's theory of whispers she has heard for several nights. When Kristen and David go to visit Orson for another assessment, the defendant reveals personal information that Kristen never told him or anyone else. Orson speaks Latin and scares Kristen away. The psychologist freaks out and goes out for some fresh air. Kristen finds out that Orson spoke in Latin and threatens her that George is out to get her daughters. So, she drives to her therapist's clinic and asks about Kurt's note during their sessions. Kurt shows her the file case and they realize that her therapy file was stolen. She drives back to jail and asks the guards as to who else has visited LaRue besides them. She comes to find that Leland Townsend has been visiting the defendant. She goes to attend the trial and finds Townsend giving a testimony concluding Orson's alleged demonic possessions. Kristen then calls Kurt and asks about Townsend. She then tells her therapist that Townsend has broken into Kurt's office and has stolen her therapy file. She then deduces that Townsend is responsible for conceiving Leroux to act on his murderous impulses and has been coaching him to act possessed. While on recess, Townsend walks out of the courtroom and Kristen goes over to confront her. David follows to confront him as well. Townsend ridicules David, causing the assessor to punch the man. Later, David tells Kristen that demons are often just an excuse for evil people like Townsend to justify their desire to make others suffer for sheer amusement. David believes that Townsend connected with Orson online and encouraged him to kill. They then realize that Leroux had been in touch with Townsend via the wife's email address. Kristen and David eventually confront Leroux about his lies. She then goes to the DA and gives him proof of the defendant being completely sane and is therefore guilty of all the murders. The episode ends that evening when David and Ben go over to Kristen's office, which is also her residence address. 
and hang out there. Ben tells Kristen that he fixed her whispering problem, the whooshing sound she heard nights before. David then shows Ben about their next case and Kristen decides to join David's team permanently. Episode 2 begins with David praying constantly in church and proceeds to jog at night. He recites the Lord's Prayer as he jogs. He stops right in front of a nightclub, somewhat tempted to enter. Later that night, as he kneels on the side of his bed, praying as hard as he could, he can imagine Townsend behind him speaking like the demon that he is. One evening, David tells his team that they will investigate medical evidence and Kristen will offer her opinion as to whether the video evidence is beyond their scientific understanding. The team is assigned to determine if there was any divine intervention. Ben plays the CCTV footage of the morgue, revealing Naomi Clark, an 18-year-old African-American girl who died of a cardiac arrest in the middle of a college soccer game. The video also reveals her parents going to the morgue to say their goodbyes to their daughter and a priest, Father Augustus, going inside the morgue to recite Naomi's last rites. The priest holds the dead girl's hand and whispers something to her. After that, as the autopsy begins, the doctor makes an incision on Naomi's right jaw, and the girl miraculously wakes up from the pain. The next day, the trio interview the hospital administrator and he worries about the lawsuit being filed for what happened to Naomi. The admin explains that Naomi had hyperinflation, a condition wherein the lungs lack elasticity and the excess air from CPR gets trapped in the lungs and keeps the patient from breathing. The admin then puts the blame on the first responders for being inexperienced. The trio interview the paramedics next and he tells them that it is a complete lie for the hospital to dodge a lawsuit on malpractice. He explains to them that they got their patient to the door of the hospital and rapid response takes over from there. Despite the paramedics being skeptical, he thinks that it's somewhat a miracle because the girl has been dead for three hours. Ben tells the team that the surveillance tapes are considered evidence, leading Kristen to speak to the plaintiff attorney Daryl. She knows that Daryl is in the malpractice lawsuit, so she convinces him to give her surveillance footage and in return, she will give him information on the hospital's defense. Suddenly, the DA arrives outside the courthouse and talks to Kristen. The DA offers to reinstate Kristen because it'll be difficult on the DA's part to find another person to do her job. Kristen worries that she needs a little bit more certainty in the job offer, so the DA agrees to give her a two-year contract. Later, she meets with Ben and David to show them the footage in the operating room, the time Naomi passes. David asks if it looks like the medical professionals are rushing the CPR, but Kristen sees that their actions are textbook, nothing out of the ordinary. The video then reveals a quick flash of white light. Ben slows it down and it reveals an image of a woman quickly passing the footage. But Ben suggests that it could be the result of digital manipulation, since it is a reused digital card and it might have mixed with an earlier recording. He investigates this and comes to find that the image is of a white woman named Bernadette May, who passed away an hour before Naomi did. While Ben works on the footage, Kristen and David go out of the office and they talk about miracles. Kristen opens up to David about her youngest daughter Laura for being born with a heart defect. She doesn't understand the reason why prayers don't really help. She then tells David about the two-year contract that the DA has offered her. That night, Laura wakes up screaming and asks her mother if she could sleep next to her because her bed is wet. When they lay in Kristen's bed, Laura begins telling her mom that a man visited her in her dream. As the little girl begins to describe the image of the man, Kristen realizes that it sounds like George visited her daughter. The next day, David goes to visit Monsignor Matthew Karecki and tells them that they need to match the offer of the DA, seeing as they don't want to lose Kristen. So the Monsignor agrees to give the money. He also asks about the miracle case. He wants an honest assessment because Father Augustus, an alcoholic priest, is now a big name in the church and the Monsignor doesn't want to tarnish the church's reputation. When David and Kristen go to visit Father Augustus, the priest mentions something about not being able to see visions, unlike David. The father then tells them that he just finished giving last rites to Bernadette May. The priest is convinced that Naomi's revival was a divine intervention. Not long after, Kristen goes to give the DA the cases she promised to work on and then tells them about staying in David's team. He informs her the offer has been rescinded and that Dr. Townsend has replaced her. She tells him that Townsend is a psychopath and that he cannot be trusted. The DA believes that Kristen is only jealous that Townsend replaced her. That evening, Kristen's daughters are watching a horror movie, and she joins in and watches with them. She discovers while watching the scary film that George is in fact a fictional character and is therefore not real. The next day, Ben is pretty much convinced that they will never figure out how the footage is manipulated. He shows them the different footage of Bernadette and Naomi and thinks that the video of Bernadette somehow got superimposed over Naomi's. After careful observation, David is able to determine the answer to what really happened. Later, David confronts the head of the hospital that the hospital pronounced Naomi dead 30 minutes too early, exposing racist practices that he has Kristen report to a lawyer suing the hospital for malpractice. He then goes to the Monsignor and tells him that it was never a miracle. It was a combination of gross incompetence and a medical condition. David tells him about the image that is left unexplained, as the priest overseeing the team's work refuses to discuss it. The episode ends later that night when David jogs his way to the nightclub, reciting the Lord's Prayer. He goes and enters the club to meet with a man where he purchases hallucinogens from. He then goes home and uses the hallucinogens to receive visions from God. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.
Thank you.